Chapter 2 Ethereum Basics In this chapter, we will start exploring Ethereum, learning how to use wallets, how to create transactions, and also how to run a basic smart contract. Ether Currency Units Ethereum's currency unit is called Ether, identified also as ETH or with the Greek letter C. Ether is subdivided into smaller units, down to the smallest unit possible, which is named Wei. One Ether is one quintillion Wei, or 10 to the 18th power. You may also hear people refer to the currency Ethereum, but this is a common beginner's mistake. Ethereum is the system, Ether is the currency. The value of Ether is always represented internally in Ethereum as an unsigned integer value denominated in Wei. When you transact one Ether, the transaction encodes 10 to the 18th way as the value. Ether's various denominations have both a scientific name using the International System of Units, SI, and a colloquial name that pays homage to many of the great minds of computing and cryptography. Choosing an Ethereum wallet The term wallet has come to mean many things although they are all related and on a day-to-day -day basis boil down to pretty much the same thing. We will use the term wallet to mean a software application that helps you manage your Ethereum accounts. In short, an Ethereum wallet is your gateway to the Ethereum system. It holds your keys and can create and broadcast transactions on your behalf. Choosing an Ethereum wallet can be difficult because there are many different options with different features and designs. Some are more suitable for beginners, and some are more suitable for experts. The Ethereum platform itself is still being improved, and the best wallets are often the ones that adapt to the changes that come with the platform upgrades. But don't worry, if you choose a wallet and don't like how it works, or if you like it at first but later want to try something else, you can change wallets quite easily. All you have to do is to make a transaction that sends your fund from the old wallet to the new wallet, or export your private keys and import them into the new one. We have selected three different types of wallets to use as examples throughout the book. A mobile wallet, a desktop wallet, and a web-based wallet. We have chosen these three wallets because they represent a broad range of complexity and features. However, the selection of these wallets is not an endorsement of their quality or security. They are simply a good starting point for demonstrations and testing. Remember that for a wallet application to work, it must have access to your private keys. So it is vital that you only download and use wallet applications from sources you trust. Fortunately, in general, the more popular a wallet application is, the more trustworthy it is likely to be. Nevertheless, it is good practice to avoid putting all your eggs in one basket and have your Ethereum accounts spread across a couple of wallets. The following are some good starter wallets. 1. MetaMask MetaMask is a browser extension wallet that runs in your browser. It is easy to use and convenient for testing as it is able to connect to a variety of Ethereum nodes and test blockchains. MetaMask is a web-based wallet. 2. Jax Jax is a multi-platform and multi-currency wallet that runs on a variety of operating systems, including Android, iOS, Windows, macOS, and Linux. It is often a good choice for new users as it is designed for simplicity and ease of use. Jax is either a mobile or a desktop wallet, depending on where you install it. 3. My Ether Wallet, MEW. My Ether Wallet is a web based wallet that runs in any browser. It has multiple sophisticated features we will explore in many of our examples. My Ether Wallet is a web based wallet. 4. Emerald Wallet. Emerald Wallet is designed to work with the Ethereum Classic blockchain, but is compatible with other Ethereum based blockchains. It's an open source desktop application and works under Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Emerald Wallet can run a full node or connect to a public remote node working in a light mode. 
It also has a companion tool to do all operations from the command line. We will start by installing MatterMask on a desktop. But first, we will briefly discuss controlling and managing keys. Control and responsibility. Open blockchains like Ethereum are important because they operate as a decentralized system. That means lots of things, but one crucial aspect is that each user of Ethereum can and should control their own private keys, which are the things that control access to funds and smart contracts. We sometimes call the combination of access to funds and smart contracts an account or wallet. These terms can get quite complex in their functionality, so we will go into this in more detail later. As a fundamental principle, however, it is as easy as one private key equals one account. Some users choose to give up control over their private keys by using a third-party custodian, such as an online exchange. In this book, we will teach you how to take control and manage your own private keys. With control comes a big responsibility. If you lose your private keys, you lose access to your funds and contracts. No one can help you regain access. Your funds will be locked forever. Here are a few tips to help you manage this responsibility. 1. Do not improvise security. Use try and tested standard approaches. 2. The more important the account, the higher security measures should be taken. 3. The highest security is gained from an air gap device, but this level is not required for every account. 4. Never store your private key in plain form, especially digitally. Fortunately, most user interfaces today won't even let you see the raw private key. 5. Private keys can be stored in an encrypted form as a digital key store file. Being encrypted, they need a password to unlock. When you are prompted to choose a password, make it strong, back it up, and don't share it. If you don't have a password manager, write it down and store it in a safe and secret place. To access your account, you need both the key store file and the password. 6. Do not store any passwords in digital documents, digital photos, screenshots, online drives, encrypted PDFs, etc. Again, do not improvise security. Use a password manager or pen and paper. 7. When you are prompted to back up a key as a mnemonic word sequence, use pen and paper to make a physical backup. Do not leave the task for later. You will forget. These backups can be used to rebuild your private key in case you lose all the data saved on your system or if you forget or lose your password. However, they can also be used by attackers to get your private keys, so never store them digitally. And keep the physical copy stored securely in a locked drawer or safe. 8. Before transferring any large amounts, first do a small test transaction and wait for a confirmation of receipt. 9. When you create a new account, Start by sending only a small test transaction to the new address. Once you receive the test transaction, try sending back again from that account. There are lots of reasons account creation can go wrong, and if it has gone wrong, it is better to find out with a small loss. If the tests work, all is well. 10. Public block explorers are an easy way to independently see whether a transaction has been accepted by the network. However, this convenience has a negative impact on your privacy because you reveal your addresses to block explorers, which can track you. Lastly, do not send money to any of the addresses shown in this book. The private keys are listed in the book and someone will immediately take that money. Now that we have covered some basic best practices for key management and security, let's get to work using MetaMask.